Hi guys, I'm just going to talk about uh, clutches for a few minutes here tonight. Um, this particular clutch, this clutch basket, clutch pack, whatever you want to call it, um, is off a Honda, a 1979 Honda, uh, CM185 Twin Star. It's vintage. Anyway, uh, the reason I want to talk about clutches is something I noticed uh, a couple of times with bikes that I've bought, um, one actually quite recently, <clears throat> was uh, I the clutch was stuck, you might say. So rather than pulling the clutch all apart. So I'm going to show you what that's, that involves. Um, for those of you that don't really know clutches really that well, um, they're spring-loaded. They're under constant pressure, right? Stationary as the bike just sits there. The clutch pack is squished together. So if you look at the inside of the clutch pack, let's pull this apart. You can see these springs. See, see the spring behind the plate? Now obviously, <clears throat> this engine hasn't been together in a long, long time. These are just spare bits that I've had kicking about the shop. So, you pull the plates. Okay, a quick little description about <clears throat> the function of the clutch, right? Uh, for some of you it's probably quite obvious, but the clutch just separates the power of the engine from the transmission which is, you know, directly, pretty much directly connected to the rear wheel, right? So, yeah, this here, this here uh, worm gear spline that's going to be running off the engine. There's an inner spline here. This shaft inside is going to be running off transmission. I don't know how well you can see that, but there are notches on this inner shaft deep down inside. and they're going to be driving transmission, okay? Anyway, a sticky clutch could just be dry plates, especially common in something that's been left to sit for a long, long time, uh, and especially something that's been left to sit for a long time with little to no oil in it. So these, this is a, this is a wet type clutch. It's a friction clutch, right? So this is supposed to sit in some oil, and when you turn the engine over, it's going to get bathed in oil. You can see that there's metal plates in between. You can see that there are friction plates. There's plates with a material on them. That material under that pressure constantly can dry out. You can see there's still some oil left on that plate. So you're always going to have a plate of steel between the two other friction plates, material type plates. So you'll have you see there's still some oil in between. So anyway, that's basically the clutch pack on this bike. Torn down. The trouble is, if it sat for so long with all that pressure on it, and then you go to start the bike, you get the bike running, you've cleaned the carburetor, you've done all the necessary things, 
but the thing that uh, the thing that's got you stuck is the fact that the clutch just won't break free. So rather than go through the trouble of taking the casing off and pulling the whole clutch apart and physically breaking free all those pieces. These ones obviously are nice and free, right? Rather than do that, <clears throat> what I suggest and what has worked for me uh, a couple times is just to check the oil, make sure the oil is up, okay? Kick the engine over a few times in neutral, it doesn't matter, your clutch is stuck so your wheels just don't want to let go. Um, that is, it will turn over fine in neutral. It'll kick over fine in neutral, but as soon as you put it in gear and you try to kick the engine over, the wheel just spins. It wants to go. You can't, you pull the clutch in, it has no effect. So, what you might want to try is what works for me. Take a clamp. Because you're not going to want to stick around the shop while you're doing this. Let's go over to the bike. This particular bike I actually had problems with. <clears throat> so, this is the answer. I need two hands to do this. Anyway, you see the clutch lever <clears throat> This clutch is working just fine now. You pull it in, it actually will disengage the transmission from the rear wheel in every gear. So what I did was, <clears throat> I just put this clamp One moment. Clamp the lever. This bike, <clears throat> I had to leave it. I came out, you know, every day to the shop. I uh, gave it a couple of kicks in gear. Uh, it just rolled forward the first day, the second day. Uh, the end of the second day, I gave it a kick uh, just using the kick start. If it has an electric start, I wouldn't recommend it. But just a couple of kicks, <clears throat> um, rather forceful kicks. And, uh, yeah, it broke free on the second day. And I guess a good point to mention is that uh, even after it breaks free, which doing it this way obviously is a lot safer than trying to ride it out, heat up the engine and think that, you know, uh, well, if I ride it around for a while, it'll break free. If it's a street bike, yeah, a little sketchy to do that in the dirt. If it's a dirt bike, yeah, maybe, sure. If you've got good brakes and whatever, you've got a wide open field, have at her. Um, but, if you've got a couple of days and you're working on other, other things on the bike anyway, you might as well put the clamp on the clutch and let it break itself free, if it will. If not, you may actually have to get in there and physically break them all free. Or it could be some other problem. But that's where I'd start first. Another thing uh, worthy of a mention is even after the clutch is broke free, it doesn't mean that all of the plates are broke free. So if you're breaking free a uh, 350 or a 450 four-stroke, uh, or even a two-stroke, a 125, a 250, whatever you got. Keep in mind, after it's broke free, when you're riding it, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the plates broke free, so that bike may feel really strange for the first hour and a half or so until all the plates start moving again. They're all supposed to move more or less independent of one another. One another. Okay, guys, um, it's late. I'm going in. That's it for tonight. Thanks again so much for watching.